Welcome to Accounting. This course is intended to help the students applying for Cambridge RGCSC Accounting exam to pass and it's based on their syllabus. However, it's useful for the O-level students and it's also useful for anyone who wants to study basics of accounting. Because this course at the end will qualify you to work as assistant accountant or a bookkeeper. Then you can study more accounting to be an accountant. We start by telling you some theoretical information that will be the basis for our study, but most of the course will be based on practical exercises and working with numbers, so it will be more interesting than this. So be with me in the first few sessions, then you, you'll find, find it more fun and for more interesting. First thing is purpose of accounting. Why accounting? Accounting is to measure the profit or loss or the value of any business. So if you look to this, to measure the profit or loss and the value of business. And accounting is a process. We go through a process to do this measurement. The process includes four steps. These steps are as listed here in blue, recording transactions. Any transaction that the business enters to that involves monetary value has to be recorded so that it helps us to measure the profit or loss. So all the transactions has to be recorded. Examples of transactions are selling goods, buying equipment, buying assets, paying salaries, paying rent, paying costs of license, any, anything that has money, either to be paid by the business or to be received as payment to the business. Second thing is to classify and group, classifying and grouping of the transactions. We will have thousands and thousands of transactions. Of different types so we need to classify them to groups that have all similar transactions together this will help us to do the third step third step is summarizing financial information we need to have totals of each similar transactions each group of similar transactions to tell us the total of the similar activity then we need to do reporting and using the financial information we do the report and we use the report to help us to do things We'll see how to use it and who's using it. But the more important outputs that we are talking about in forms of reports are the income statement that will tell us the profit or loss of the organization and the statement of the financial position that will tell us the value of the business. These are our study will be focused on this: how to do the accounting, how to do the four steps of the accounting process, and how to do the income statement and the statement of financial position. Then we talk about who is using the accounting information. The basic users are the owners of the business. We refer to them here as entrepreneurs. Other users are the suppliers because most of the time organizations don't pay in cash for any goods they receive. So they pay on credit and for supply, in order for suppliers to decide to give the credit to the organization, they need to have information about their, their economical activities. Then we have banks, in, in case the organization wants to have loans from banks or using overdrafts from banks. In this world, everyone is working in credit, so banks are very important. Employees, if you are an employee in a, in a business, you want to make sure that the business is doing good, so you have some certainty about your future, uh, plus that you, you make sure that you, you get bonuses and you get salary increases and so on. And last thing, tax authority, you know that tax is with you for any business to, to make profit so they can get money or can get, get the fair tax on it. These are the users. There, you will see that there will be another users when we talk about partnership, when we talk about stock companies. There will be stockholders and, and the stock market people. But for now, let's talk about these users only. Then we talk about the information communication technology used in accounting. Briefly, there are advantages and disadvantages for, for the use of information communication technology. Everyone is using a computer now. I, I think it would be very old-fashioned for any business not to use the information communication technology. But it would be helpful for us to know what are the advantages and disadvantages of this. If you look to it, in blue, these are the advantages and with the arrow going up and the red are the disadvantages. As you see, it's only three disadvantages and the arrow is going down versus five advantages or maybe you can have more advantages we will find it out later but security of the information is improved through the use of information communication technology 
processing speeds much higher using computers, processing of high volume of data, and check, check errors and reconciliation, flexibility reporting, you can do the reports for several periods uh, with very, very easy access. And the last thing is information storage capacity is very high using computers and technology. Of course, all of us know about this. This advantage is that it will need computers and staff. And if we use the wrong data or wrong programs, it will be a big problem because it's very fast and it's very high capacity. So if you did the wrong thing, it will be manipulated. It will be multiplied. And the last thing, it will need training for your staff to use the, the software and use the computers. So we'll talk about the accounting equation, which is a very fundamental in studying accounting. Accounting equation is the base that we put everything on it. So here it's assets equal liabilities plus owners equity. Assets is everything that the business owns. It's cash, it's inventory, it's, asset, it's uh, building, it's cars, it's machinery, it's furniture, it's everything that's owned by the business and is not an expense. So do we, I have, we have some few examples of this. Current assets, we have cash, we have accounts receivables. Accounts receivables are the credits that the business is given to its customers and usually it's collected between 30 to 90 days. And inventory, inventory is convertible to money within the year. It shouldn't stay actually more than 90 days without being converted to cash. So these are the current assets who are by nature less in life than one year, plus that they are very easy convertible to cash. Then we have non-current assets that have useful life of more than one year, plus that they are not easily convertible to cash. Examples are vehicles and premises, if the, the business owns its building, and machinery. There are several other examples we can talk about them, but for now, let's make it simple. Now, liabilities are also divided to current and non-current liabilities. Examples of current liabilities are accounts payable. These are the credit received by the business from its suppliers, and usually it's payable within 50 to 90 days. Bank overdrafts that show very short-term credit provided from the bank. And the non-current example of non-current liabilities is bank loan. And our owner's equity, that's the money invested in forms of cash or assets by the owners. We'll talk in details about this and we'll see how to treat it. Now, what, this is the basic form of accounting equation when the business start. And at the end of any accounting period, we have what we call extended, extended accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity plus revenues minus expenses. We add the revenues generated and expenses incurred during the accounting period to adjust the value of the assets that will tell us the new value of the business. If you take the first letter of each of these terms, assets is A, liabilities is L, owner's equity is OE, revenues R, and expenses is E. We have the rules of debit and credit. Anyone heard about accounting? Definitely heard about the rules of debit and credit, and it's very simple, it's very easy. Some people are considering it very hard, but it's very easy if you understand it well. We have, by nature, assets is debit, and expenses is debit. All others are credit. Why expenses is here? It is just for one presentation of the form, but actually, if you want to make it balanced, or people who remember algebra, just if you move the expenses here to be assets plus expenses, equals liabilities plus owners equity plus equity. However, let's keep it as it is because this is actually what we are doing, the calculation this way. So if you said assets, assets is debit by national. So any increase in assets is debit and any decrease in assets is credit. Same thing for expenses. Increase is debit and decrease is credit. The other three are credit. So the increase is credit. Increase is credit, increase is credit. Decrease is debit, decreases debit, decreases debit. If you want to really remember this in a very funny way, I had one of the teachers making 
statement on this. You say, if this is like sandwich. These are the bread. The assets and expenses are the bread. While liabilities, owners, equity, and revenues are the owner. If you like eggs, if you like hamburger, if you like cheese, if you like anything, these are your favorite food in the sandwich. So the sandwich size, the bread is debit. So increase in debit is debit and decrease in debit is credit. Inside the sandwich is credit. Increase in credit is credit and decrease in credit is debit. Other way to remember it is the taker and giver. Anything who is giving regards to the nature of the, the term. If, if it's giving, it's a credit. When, when it's given, it's a credit. If it's taken, it's a debit, regardless to the nature. So you can remember this, you can remember this. And over the time with the exercise, you will find it more applicable and more memorizable. Thank you, and let's wait for the second session where we talk about other things that will make things better for you. Thank you.